Hello, and welcome to another session of uh, digital slide review and sign out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our uh, cases are uh, courtesy of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, which is a joint venture with the Digital Pathology Association and Path Presenter. Uh, my time is paid for by the University of Oklahoma, and many of our cases come from the files here of the Oklahoma uh, Stevenson Cancer Center, an NIH designated uh, cancer center which we note that again, uh, had uh, one of the highest enrollments on uh, NIH sponsored trials over the past year. Our case is uh, again, a GYN case, <clears throat> that of a 74 year old woman who has developed some abdominal pelvic swelling and is found to have a six centimeter adnexo mass. So certainly at that age group, uh, something in the adnexa is uh, likely to be malignant. Um, and that was uh, the primary concern at operation, uh, the surgeon found uh, the lesion to be uh, primarily in the broad ligament without an obvious attachment to the ovary uh, or to the, um, or, or in, uh, specifically arising from the fallopian tube. So that presents a rather limited differential of uh, uh, lesions, uh, amongst which uh, are the findings in the current case. Um, a frozen section was performed and uh, our initial impression was that this might be a uh, sex cord stromal tumor, uh, perhaps an adult granulosa cell tumor or something of that sort, uh, because it was quite cellular and had sort of an organoidish pattern, some cystic spaces and so forth. Um, however, on uh, permanent sections uh, and further immunohistochemical study, that did not seem to uh, be the correct diagnosis. Um, one of the features that we can see at low power is these areas here, uh, which have a, a characteristic pattern. So let's take a look at these areas. And we see there are many little small microcystic areas here uh, in what might be termed a sieve-like pattern. Uh, the cells lining them do not appear to be usual adenocarcinoma type of cells because they're really not oriented very well towards the gland or the space, the lumen of the space, uh, but it rather looks like just a uh, sort of a haphazard arrangement of cells and nuclei relative to those spaces. We also note there's a lot of hyalinization around the very vascular pattern here. Uh, and some of these uh, uh, areas have a very fibrinoid appearance uh, as well. Here's another of these uh, um, very sieve-like areas that you can see here. Um, and again, a very delicate pattern, uh, sort of corded and, and sieve-like, uh, but not uh, high-grade nuclei, not very many mitoses, uh, no single cell necrosis. Uh, this does not look uh, too much like uh, an adenocarcinoma by any means. So a sieve-like pattern, look and we'll look at some of the other areas that are present here with these very hyalinized vessels and a lot of fibrinoid changes in these cystic areas. Um, let's go to another uh, area of the lesion, um, which shows uh, a very prominent uh, degree of uh, sort of spindle cell type of morphology. Let it uh, depixelate here. And here we can see a more solid uh, pattern with many of these cells uh, forming sort of a streaming fish or a weakly, vaguely spindled shaped pattern uh, in these areas as well. So immunohistochemistry was uh, performed to uh, provide some uh, help in defining this lesion. Um, and one of the most important ones was in Hibben, uh, which was entirely negative. Um, and so that together with other markers tended to uh, argue against this being any sort of a sex cord stromal tumor uh, such as a granulosa cell tumor or other uh, type of uh, sex cord tumor. Uh, it did stain positively with pancytokeratin and had sort of a patchy, weak Pax8 positivity, uh, indicating that it was most likely primary in this location um, rather than a metastatic tumor uh, from some other location. Uh, stromal stains like CD117, uh, were also performed to try to elucidate that. And uh, it had a little focal positivity with CD117 and CD99, but nothing uh, sufficient to warrant uh, uh, thoughts that this was a, um, 
a GI stromal tumor or other sort of uh, small uh, blue cell neoplasm. Uh, it was also hormone positive uh, with uh, ER and PR. And so we were led to the diagnosis of female adnexal tumor of probable Wolfian origin. Sorry, I spelled the Wolfian wrong there. Uh, this is an uncommon adnexal tumor that occurs uh, primarily in adulthood, but over a very broad age range and typically presents in the broad ligament or attached uh, by a pedicle to the fallopian tube. It does tend to have this solid and mixed solid cystic appearance, uh, often will be tan grade in color on uh, um, gross evaluation. Uh, and microscopically, it does have these cords and sieve-like pattern of uh, solid, uh, sometimes spindled and uh, epithelioid cells, which are generally uh, quite low grade in appearance. However, uh, up to 10% of them will behave in a malignant fashion, although obviously this is based on a relatively small number of reported cases, uh, probably uh, uh, around 100 or so that have been reported. Uh, so we don't really have uh, well-developed um, uh, indicators as to uh, malignant behavior um, in these cases. Um, the differential diagnosis, as I've mentioned, can include adult granulosa cell tumor and other sex cord stromal tumors. Endometrioid carcinoma is a consideration, and that uh, needs to be carefully watched because sometimes these tumors uh, will stain. Well, they will stain typically with keratins and with vimentin, as endometrioid tumors might. Um, the PAX-8 staining was uh, less than would be expected. Uh, but the P16 pattern in this tumor was also similar to what can be seen in some endometrioid adenocarcinomas. Uh, neuroendocrine tumors, uh, this was uniformly negative for synoptophysin and CK56, and metastatic neoplasia from other organs, uh, as well as the stromal uh, neoplasms that I've mentioned. Uh, so typically, it will be positive with pan-CK, bimentin, and with hormone receptors, uh, but will be negative with inhibin and EMA and can be variable with these other uh, markers. So a very a brief look at a very unusual and uh, interesting case, a female adnexal tumor of probable Wolfian origin is our final sign out diagnosis for this case. Uh, we welcome you to uh, uh, check out the links in the descriptions below so that you can have more time to personally study the digital slides uh, of this case uh, because uh, they are unusual and it's uh, great to have uh, seen some I hope that you've enjoyed this and that you'll join us again soon. Please subscribe so that you won't miss new videos as they're posted. And we welcome your comments, either below or directed to me privately at the contact sites above. Thanks, and we'll look forward to seeing you again.